Hey traders, this is Ron Hayda, Market Tamer. Happy Sunday. Hope you're doing fantastic. As always, nothing in this presentation shall constitute a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Trading stocks and options involve risk and specific financial issues. You should always be addressed with your financial advisor. We'll kick off here with the Diamonds ETF on the Dow. We came down Thursday, hit the 200-day moving average. We gapped up on Friday, traded lower, gave it all back, and then closed at higher end of the range. We are essentially still on to outside that lower Bollinger Band. We're a little oversold. We're not grossly oversold like we were on Thursday, so it's a little less oversold, but we're still oversold. However, the direction is still down because we're below the five-day EMA in blue, which is your short-term moving average. It's looking out the next five days. We're clearly below it. And if that support level fails, the next support starts around 240 and then comes in around 235-ish. So there's still some serious downside targets that can come into play. Right now and after market, the futures have been all over the place, mainly, mainly to the downside, but we'll see how Monday trades. And if we end up getting below the purple line, that is going to be a bad sign for the bulls and a good sign for the bears. If we take a look at the spiders, it's going to be similar commentary. I do have a bullish position in the spy. If we get below the 200 day moving average, um, as you can see, we did get below the 200 day moving average on Thursday. We got back above it on Friday, but we're still outside the lower. Um, two standard deviation Bollinger Band in green. This is still oversold, so maybe we get to see a little more of a bounce maybe come Monday if the world, quote, doesn't end. Um, sh you know, bearish traders, short traders, after having two big banner days, there was just some short covering going into the weekend. But who knows what's going to happen on Monday? We'll just have to take it as it comes. But the trend is down. That is the overall theme here. Downside targets. Thursday's candle sort of got us into the swing low from June, July. The next major support level, I would say, is 255 to 260. That's a long ways down, maybe as many as 200 S&P points. If we go to the Qs, now they busted through their 200-day moving average back on Thursday. Got back above it on Friday, if I zoom in, smack right back down at the five-day EMA in blue. So the Bears, they, they held their line. The Bulls, there was no big punch higher. They could have gotten by the five-day would probably vote better for the markets, but we didn't. Um, we are back inside the Bollinger Bands, meaning oversold conditions gone. I mean, there's no no more short-term bounce to be that oversold condition. You know, we're teetering on the Bollinger Band on the diamonds and the spiders, not on the Qs. Meaning it could just roll right back over before it gets oversold again. The next major support for the Qs, pretty much down in the 155 area. That is a long way down. Now, the IWM and the MDY on the dailies, they have been performing the worst. The IWM already has two full days going into Friday below its 200-day. Friday's action was basically unchanged at the end of the day, and the target's down around 147. On the daily charts, the MDY, not that far away, maybe five, six, seven points away from support. But if I change this to a two-year weekly, on the majors. Now, every candle represents one week of time. Crack that 50 period like a hot knife through butter. There is some support around 330 on the weeklies. If we go to the IWM, the small caps, their support ballpark 150, 145, they're getting closer, but they've performed the worst. How about the Qs? T bone right off that 50 period moving average. That's a good sign. If that falls, then you come back into this area mid 150s. This is on the weeklies. But the blue line has not crossed through the red line on the Qs yet. Let me zoom in. When that happens, that is a sell signal on the weeklies. We haven't had a sell signal on the weeklies in over a year on the Qs. So this is, you know, is going to be noteworthy coming into this week. We have earnings season also coming in this week. And if I just pop up the calendar, you can see the 19th. That's also monthly expiration. So there'll be a lot of fireworks coming up here. See how the market does. The spiders T-boned off the 50 period moving average again on the weeklies. Their supports down in the mid to upper 250s, and then the diamonds um, closed below the red, which is the 20 period, but still above the 50 period. And again, it's been that way for a while. Support on the weeklies 230s, mid to upper. Again, overall this week, bears have the edge. Uh, we are not oversold in the weeklies. We were only oversold in the dailies, and just by a little bit. So caution still warranted. Earnings season is coming up. Great opportunity to still think about considering protective puts. You can practice in a paper trading portfolio, so there's no risk. You can see how puts perform if stocks drop and if stocks pop, and it goes you know the other way, where your stock gains value and the puts can lose value. So if you haven't done that before, please practice, and then you'll see how these things play out. We'll do a couple examples 
uh, in the nightly videos over the next two weeks as well. I get a question on, you know, what is often a good amount of time for protective puts? I'm not a licensed financial advisor. I can't tell you what to do. What I would consider doing is getting a paper trading account. Think about 45 to 90 day long puts right near where the stock is trading as practice. Then you can, you know, if the stock's at 100, a $100 long put is considered at the money right where the stock is trading. If you want to go a little in the money, the stock's at 100, think about maybe a 110 long put. It's going to have a higher delta. So the put's going to gain value faster as the stock drops, but you're going to pay more. So then if the stock goes higher, the put loses more value. What I would suggest doing is actually do it three ways. Buy a put below where the stock is trading, at where the stock is trading, and above where the stock is trading. And then when the stocks move, you can see how each one, each put option will change its value. And then maybe you can find one that you might like best. All right, so I'll be back with you in tomorrow's video. Wish you guys a fantastic rest of the day, and I think we're going to see some more fireworks this week. Take care.